Hey guys, and welcome to How to Paint Fecular Flyblown. Okay, so this week we're going to be attempting to paint her up and her little cat, uh, or cat-like thing or whatever that is. Um, you know, and yeah, she's a really cool model. Um, it looks awesome. And I think the concept for this, what I want to do is I want a black witch, basically. So, I, you know, what I've got in my head is that sort of Disney witch, you know, the animated kind of Disney witch with the black cloak and everything. So we're going to be using the techniques that I use in a lot of my videos. Um, I'll leave links to how to paint uh, black cloth and the videos that I have on the Black Kings that show how to do... Um, painting flesh with uh, color glazes and so on. So they'll be in the description. Um, and if I'm really good, I'll post the link for the, um, the black cloth now. And then I'll post the link for um, the flesh probably now as well, <laughs> if I can do that. Um, and then you can take a look at those for more in-depth ones. There's going to be an overview of me attempting to paint this. So I don't actually know where I'm going to go with this totally, but we're going to go on the journey together. So I'm thinking black for the, for the robes, um, the glaze flesh and so on, using my very favorite uh, corpse pale here and Grimnar purple. We're going, to, whoop, we're going to build that up and create a nice pallid uh, flesh tone for her. And then that really nice dark black, neutral black with uh, using the greys, the neutral greys to build up her, her robes. And that will then frame and give you uh, like something that's easier to look at. So that, that's just going to, yeah, frame the other colors. So you'll, you'll be able to see the face more clearly. There's a lot of detail on this model and it's hard to, I've seen a lot of paint schemes where it's, you know, quite vibrant colors, but it tends to be hard to have some somewhere where you can rest your eye and focus so the the black is hopefully going to give us that canvas much like my other tutorials where I use black a lot um, I think it really helps on some of these more busy models not to say it's a bad thing but it's just something to consider so yeah we're going to do that we're going to give the little uh, cat there um, this um, iron rack skin it's got a little bit of green in it and I think this will be a nice color to offset the the black and then we've got some browns and so on and then the color glazing with my with my usual um, color glazes there that I use so it should end up a really cool really cool color and maybe we'll get some red on here somewhere as well but I'm not quite sure yet so um, but overall it should get that feel of that sort of classic black witch uh, robed witch kind of kind of idea I'm thinking anyway so yeah uh, get your palette ready. Let's get started. Okay, so to start with, we really want to get that black down. And Citadel's Abaddon Black is a really great one for this. It's got a low satin, low sheen satin finish, which gives a nice uh, bit of luster to it. It's really good for doing neutral blacks, neutral highlighted blacks. It just adds a bit of depth. You're getting a bit of atmospheric, you know, a reflection in that black, and it's going to make it more interesting. So you'll see me adding those coats in, and we're doing about three coats, a little bit watered down, uh, to get a, ni a nice strong finish. And so from there, you then want to to do the base because the base um, is going to get in the way later when we start highlighting that black it's going to become problematic when you want to go in and dry brush especially around the cat and so on so you'll see me building up the the doom bull mixed with black and then dry brushing up through bella brown um, to really sort of build up that muddy kind of atmosphere and it goes with my other models so that's 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 why i chose it but you could do anything there um, and moving right up to a shapti bone even a little bit of white in there as well and then preparing that um, to help tie it all in and not just have it ju just browns. Um, the next sort of, I guess, stage for um, giving it some more depth and some more color is to then add in, which you'll see me do in a second, um, adding in some uh, browns and greens. So in this case, I'll be using sepia uh, seraphim shade and the um, the green shade, the Biltan one, and then just like dabbing dabbing that around the base, uh, very watered down, almost like a glaze, so that you end up with. Um, just a subtle variation in the surface and you should see that coming up shortly you know I'll just start dabbing that in and, and really tying it together and at the end of all this process um, what we'll probably end up doing is also adding in some of the glaze colors from the skin so things like maybe a little bit of uh, red or purple or blue 
in and around that, but we really don't want to do that just yet because um, we don't know yet how the overall uh, look of the model is going to be. And that's one of those things you want to consider when you're when you're starting out is not to go too heavy on one on one stage. You want to sort of build everything up together in in like a, a unified whole, and so that you you can see overall like how the model's looking. So once once we've sort of gotten that down, um, the next stage is to go back and just retouch up the base of the robe where the dry brush is, is hit it. We're going to come back in and probably add a little bit of you know Nurgle's dribbles and uh, fun bits and, and and some staining at the very end, but but we want to get that clean to start with so we can highlight it. So that's part of that process. And then uh, the next big, big stage is the flesh. And the flesh, um, you'll see from other tutorial, we're building up using the Corpse Pale and the Grimnar Purple, and we're, we're going to be building in um, all of those tones to give the glazing something to, to work with. And that's really important. So you want, you want to build up at least two or three stages of color so that the glazes will then be able to work really well. And so um, you will have seen that little gradient that I showed. That's basically the color step. And so you're building up and just adding less and, hitting less and less of the model to give yourself some variety. And then we move straight into that glazing. And the glazing, we're going through um, magenta tones, um, and we're going to be adding that in to simulate the subsurface scattering, like the, the, the blood under the skin, and you know, and, and really building that out through then purple, and then finally blue. And you want to make sure that you add a lot of water to this, two or three drops, to keep it nice and thin. And you're feathering it out, you're not washing over the whole model, just picking those points to add a little bit of interest in, in the skin and make it come alive. And that's, that's a really important feature. And then finally, you're going to be going in and touching up all those boils with the, uh, a little bit of the Bella Brown and the your Shakti uh, and just adding those little fine hints and then a little bit of yellow glazing at the end just to vary the color and that should give you a really really satisfying result I feel. And so this is where the model starts to come together. So as you can see uh, the skins all, all come up really nice. All those glazes are in. Uh, the robes now have been touched up. I've gone back with the black and just touched up the little spots where the skin has, like where the, the, the colors from the skin have just accidentally gone onto the black where I've been painting. So we've cleaned it all up and we're ready now to start on that on that cloak. So we've got the neutral grays ready to go. We're gonna build up that process of going from dark to light, very simple, not hard at all. And as I said in, in the beginning of the video, there's links there to show you how I go about this, but I'm going to take you through it anyway. Um, but I, I really feel like it's starting to send to see the, the idea, you know, already, even without finishing all the details, the main points of the model are now coming forward. The the um, the head, the hand, the little cat there, and the staff, all the main elements now you can really see because that black background is now, you know, uh, in stark contrast. And that's, that's really what we're going for. So I think that um, you know the idea of the black witch is a good one for this model and I think it, I think it comes up well so we're going to move on to that now and then um, we'll go through and we'll paint the cat as well um, you know and then then we'll start to look at all those final uh, secondary details the staff and so on but there's a little bit of a, a, a way you want to go about this just like doing the base now rather than later um, we want to probably after the after the cloak we'll move down to the cat get that finished um, so they're all very close together those little parts and you don't want to get your brush hitting another part that you've already finished so it's a bit of a bit of a complex little process but if you do it in the right order it should make everything um, you know relatively easy anyway all right so let's get started so to begin with we're going to be building up that base layer of, of, of shading. So we're going to be using the Necromancer Cloak. You'll see me, um, there'll be a little bit of black mixed in with that. It's going to be a little bit darker and we're going to start to build in those those volumes across the across the, the robes. So all the raised areas, quite broad strokes, feathered the edges with the brush and just building up that base layer and then coming back in and adding straight Necrom Necromancer Cloak um, again over the top of that. So you're building up your base form. And then from there, we're moving into the mid-tone. So you'll then start adding in your dungeon gray or whatever mid-color you're doing. And you start to uh, refine those highlights across all the edges. And this is where you're gonna start to, you know, do little feathered marks and streaks and stripe and, and, and little, little dots and so on to slowly start to build in texture. And that's kind of the process. Um, and then you'll move into your straight mid and then do that again. And you're just building up layers of 
of these highlights and building all that in to, um, to build up those textures. And once you've got that base level down up to the mid-tone, uh, once you come in with your highlights, which are, which are finer lines and little feathered lines, uh, this is where you're now going to be um, basically um, adding in much more precise little you know marks and flicks along the edges of the highlights to simulate like frayed um, fabric and so on um, to to build up very obvious textures and and that's and that's where that starts coming with the uniform gray and and then you'll as you move through these steps um, you'll want to go back to more straight line highlighting and you'll see me do that where um, and, and and moving up towards the top um, ends of all of those folds where the light's going to hit it so where the light is coming down from above and that's really the 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 trick here is in the beginning you're starting with more all over kind of highlighting and then as we move up into the mid and and, and the and the last stages of those final highlights you're moving to the tops of all of the all of the forms and the final highlights are going to be less um, focused on sort of a lot of hatch lines and so on and more little straight little highlights and and dots so that you sort of bring some control back to the back to the overall feeling of the of the cloak you don't want everything to be texture otherwise it kinds it, it tends to you get it gets too busy basically so you're building up those tones nicely considered and then adding a little bit of white to that for the end where you want to just see that little bit of pop on the very tops, just around the focal points. You'll see me showing that out, just around the fa around the, the the chest area and the around the face, like the the robes that are surrounding it, uh, on the knees, on the back at the top, um, just to give that added added little pop to make it all stand out. And you should end up with something really really uh, satisfying. And so once that's all done, and then we're moving down towards the little cat. Uh, this is where we're going to start with that that iron rock flesh and and mix in a little bit of cold gray to make it slightly darker M much like many of the, the the styles I do where I do a step process we're going for a darker a darker base that's slightly darker than iron rock flesh and then building up the the tones uh, from that base with straight iron rock flesh and then moving and leaving the the sort of deeper folds and the little Im impressions in in the in the anatomy and then building uh, your your mid tones up and then finally for the the highlights and so you know you're you're doing the same process like on the skin just building those those three little steps of stages and then you know coming back in with um, You've got your boils there, which we're using, you know, uh, Bala Brown and some Mashabti you'll see me use to build up some of that yellows. Uh, and then the horns with the gray then the neutral grays, keeping it quite dark. Um, and that's 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 all, all to tie it in with the with the main model. So the little the little cat doesn't stand out too much separated from from the main figure. And so you'll see me adding those in on the little highlights on the edges. And then finally, you're wanting to look at the glazing and so the glazing process is the same with the skin I'm using the magenta I'm using the the purple and the blue and I'm going to be just and a bit of the yellow and I'm just going to be really placing it into the key areas where the blood is going to come forward uh, to the skin so around the face the knees the bottom of the feet to keep them dark and you know just build that that color into the skin so it's not so monochromatic and that that will give you um, you know a really a really satisfying finish Okay, so there we are. So the little kitty cat's done, and we've got those nice glazes in there. So it's just the same process as the skin. You know, you're just building up the, the reds, the magenta, the purple, the blue, you know, a little bit of yellow in there and, and so on. And I just darkened it down towards the feet and all of that and, and just gave it a little bit of a similar vibe to the skin, but we're using a different base. So that's, that's um, yeah, just helping tie it together. And you can already see now that we're getting, you know, it really stands out against the black. Um, and as we add the colors to the top here, we're gonna get a nice little, you know, circular sort of motif of where your eye is drawn, you know, from the, from the little cat up through the staff, back to the head, over to the hand and so on, and around the model to the other, other elements. So the next stages will be doing all of the metal areas then coming through and doing the staff and then the leathers and the bone elements and, and obviously the, the hair on, on, on the uh, on, on a head there. So, you know, we're, we're looking at, and obviously the armor as well. So the, the armor will have a little bit of a, um, 
probably it will do like a blue green or something like that and bring that green and so on into the hair I think uh, that'll give you a nice a nice um, visual cue to come up towards the face um, but yeah everything else should be really good and it should be um, fun and we'll be able to even even then do a few of the little dribbles and you know maybe some purple and, and fluoro green like something really bright like a kraken skin or something like that um, to get some little dribbles coming out of some of these areas here put a bit of staining maybe around the base of the um, the cloth and then we should get something really cool all right let's get started all right so to begin with we're going to be going through and doing the brass metals so we get out some of that uh, scorpion brass there and um, mix a little bit of black in with it and um, begin just base coating all of those metal areas so the bell and all the various little bits and pieces the the blade that's on the back of her belt um, and just go through and start working that up and then building in tones um, with the brass less black and so on moving up and then once you've got like a, about three tones down, you then come back in with your uh, brown ink, your sepia tone wash, mix with water, and then, um, you know, uh, once you've got that all down and that's dry, then you're moving forward and using vanilla and oil to, with water to um, give it some deep shadows. And so what you end up with is some nice deep uh, brassy uh, metals. And then from there, you want to, um, basically go through and then highlight so you you add in silver to that and then go through and flick off little areas little scratches and and little nicks and and so on um, to give it that extra little bit of bump um, and once you've got a nice finish that you like the look of as you can see me doing um, I'll then go through and use those color glazes the the um, the crimson and the and the purple and the blue to add in some variation across that just to just to really bring out that the the, the metals and make them look really interesting and so once you've sort of got all that down then we're looking at um, the the brown areas so we're using doom ball mixed with black and then basing basing out all of the um, the leathers and the the staff anywhere that's going to have leathers of any sort we just do that nice dark base once that's done we then go through and do the same for the bone with the fill dry bar dark brown we just go through and paint out all of those bones and um, once you've got that all sorted then we can come through and start to shade everything up so um, basically um, I went through and sort of uh, used a gradient as you see me doing and building up Doom Ball mixed with Bella Brown and then starting the leathers from different points. So some are darker, some are lighter and just building up those tones, doing highlights and um, building in um, a variety there so not everything is the same colour. You know on the staff I'm following the edges and doing highlights, that sort of thing and um, you know just just basically just building in a lot of a lot of uh, differences so not everything is the same and that's pretty much uh, you know what what you're going for and then the same process with um, the bone as you'll see me do in a minute um, you're just basically working through uh, the tones building that gradient you know from um, a dark base from the field drab mixed with a sharp tea up through white and then using those tones to build up your your bone colors and give them um, a nice you know a nice variety of, of color there keeping them pretty pretty sort of yellowy because they're sort of old bones and um, just making them look really cool and once you've done all of that um, you'll then go through and glaze those also. So for the for the all of the all of the um, the, the leathers, we're using those same um, color glazes. For the um, for the bones, we're using a little bit of green and, and sepia tone wash, um, and that's really um, part of the that whole process of just building in. Um, you know a variety of colors that work with the uh, the skin and all of the rest of the stuff that's going on in the model so it all sort of unifies and um, and ties together which is really important and you know once we've sort of got to that point and you're you're seeing all that glazing go down and everything's tying together um, then it's time to th think about the the armor pieces and the, the color that's going to be on the model right so um, here I'm blacking out those areas and then highlighting them up I'm going to use a green contrast um, glaze to then glaze that to give it a, a, a soft you know just a soft bit of green there um, greeny blue color over, over the over the black black and gray highlights um, and then finally use some blue and crack and skin which is that that really bright green and then build in some blues and greens into the hair that you'll see me do um, and 
little drips and so on to sort of add a little flash of color but keep the armor back so the, the armor stays that black so that we get that black witch feel um, and now we just have those few little flashes of uh, blue and green across the model just to draw your eye towards the face and um, really make the, the whole the whole miniature come alive okay and there we have it one finished black witch all done so yeah super cool now I could have gone back and done some extra staining around the the robes and so on but I actually kind of like it separated from that ground um, yeah so that's a little bit of a stylization choice but I like it and with the with that hair um, I didn't really explain it before but you know I, I went for a deliberate kind of um, I guess more painterly approach so it, it's a little rougher in terms of the highlights just to give that hair that sort of manky kind of um, you know uh, feeling to it um, so it has a bit of yeah texture in, in those highlights and keeping the highlights closer around the face so it sort of it sort of uh, drifts out to a darker base uh, below so your eyes sort of drawn to this area um, from the cat to her face and so on and um, yeah I think it all it all turns out pretty good and you get that black witch feel which is which is really cool um, yeah very very happy and just as a little side note uh, so if we take the others that I've done um, I thought I'd get them out so you can have a look because this just looks really cool. So this guy, he's actually a, a tutorial you can you can watch if you want to see how I did the armor here. I'll put a link for it now if you want to um, check that out. But they look really cool together and this one was done off, off camera. Um, and they're all done individually so I didn't do them as a batch or anything, you know. Um, I'll leave a photo of them together as a little group just so you can see how it works. Um, so even when you paint things individually, as long as you keep an eye on your, um, I guess, your overall color sc schemes or color palette, not even exactly the same colors, you can still arrive at a nice harmonious whole. Um, in fact, that's how I'm doing uh, my Nurgle army is each model is painted uh, one at a time. So I, I've, I've just chosen like a group of colors that I like and then every single model will be done individually, done in sort of like a classic uh, conception of chaos. So each model is, is like a champion or something that's trying to vie favor from the gods. And uh, yeah, I really love that. So anyway, that's a little side note. So I'll put a photo of that at the end. But um, yeah, there'll be a, a list of paints and, and, a, and a nice image of her um, for you to have a look at in a second. But I hope you've enjoyed this. Uh, please hit that like button, subscribe button if you have. And I guess I'll uh, catch you on the next one.